All right, welcome to the next video in this series. And now that we have Photoshop all set up and ready to go, we can now move on to the next phase. Now, before we start, I want to remind you about what we're doing here. The method I want to show you is going to give you a result that is almost random. Although you do have complete control of what you do, this method is going to be unlike anything you've seen before, and the results are really, really exciting as you never truly know what you're going to get. A lot of concept artists will often start with a sketch, a thumbnail, or blocking in shapes. For this to truly work, we need to clear our mind of any expectations. And as we get deeper into this, we can start to solidify our ideas. Don't worry if that doesn't make too much sense. I'll be clarifying this later in other videos. Essentially, what we'll be doing is finding something to start with, a color palette with values. Then we're going to distort this image and start to see things and define them. A lot of artists, especially beginning artists, say that starting is the hardest part. This method contains no planning, or I like to call it an unplanned plan. And hopefully this should be pretty stress-free. I'm going to throw up some images on the screen right now to show you what I'm talking about. This image right here is just an image of a flower I found online. And I used the colors and value from the image to create this, a landscape, completely different from the original image, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Here's another example. This is just some blue circuit board that I found, and I used those cool colors to create this super cold, mountainous landscape, and I'll have some time-lapse videos at the end of this course so you can see exactly how I did this. If you really want to, you can actually look at them right now and come back. I actually recommend that a little as it will help you understand this more clearly. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is open up your internet browser and we need to find an image to work with. There are so many images out there with so many variations of color and value. And that is exactly what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I think I want a landscape that is warm. I, I highly recommend you find your own image to work with as it will really help you understand how you can do this with almost any image. In fact, my recommendation would be watch how I do it first and then come back and try to do it yourself. This is the most important part. You need to decide what colors you want. Do you want a warm or cool environment? Do you want a dead or lively environment? These are the keywords you will be searching for. So in this case, I want a warm environment, maybe almost a deserty kind of feel. So I'm just simply going to type in keywords like warm, rocky, desert. And to add a spin on it, I'll type abstract. So let's go over to images. And before you look at anything, come over to tools, size, and click large. And this will only give us high res images to work with. Now we seem to be getting a lot of landscapes and believe it or not, I actually try to stay away from landscapes and try to find things like abstract artwork or macro images, things that are really weird so I can keep my mind clear. So let's spice this uh, search up more, and I'm going to type in art and macro. All right, this is a lot better. The more abstract, the better. Now, I want to find something that has a large range of values from black to white. That's always important. In terms of color, I'm looking for something warm. It shouldn't be too rainbowy or psychedelic. I want to make sure there are a lot of neutrals as well, like browns and grays. Now, if you think about a landscape, they commonly have a sky. And a sky is usually at the top of the canvas, and it is the brightest feature. 
I'm going to try and keep this more on the simpler and more traditional side of things. However, you can really get abstract with this. So I'm going to look for something that has lights at the top of the image. So fun things to look for are isolated images like this that have flat backgrounds. Those are always really fun. But for this, I want something that has a lot of detail. Okay. So I think I've found something. This has great variation of darks and lights, a nice warm color palette. Lights are at the top and it has good detail. I think we can make something really cool with this. Just remember in the end, it doesn't really matter which image you choose. There are better and worse images, but as long as you stick to what I said, you should be fine. Also, if you find out that the image you found isn't working for you, you can always find another one. There's so many options. I do it all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to download this image, open up my files, and drag it right into Photoshop, right into the file we made. If your image doesn't fit, don't worry. We can just stretch it out so it fills the frame. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we're going to start manipulating this image and hopefully we'll end up with something really cool.